Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one. Yes, the replay's bugged again, I know. And uh, welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. This is Francesco 121212 in the really rather good Australian Tier 10 light cruiser HMAS Brisbane. The Brisbane was actually released on my 53rd birthday, 10th of March 2023. It's a relatively new ship. It was originally only available as part of the Queen of the Seas event, but now you can get it in the armory for coal. And you absolutely should, because this ship is awesome. Um, think of the Brisbane as kind of like a Minotaur, except it has to take radar and doesn't get smoke, but it also comes with high explosive shells. Or you could think of it as a Worcester the US Navy Tier 10 light cruiser, except a Worcester that comes with torpedoes. And the torpedoes on this thing are incredibly spicy for a number of reasons. First, because this is a Commonwealth cruiser, it gets the single fire option, where instead of, I mean, there's no widespread on these torpedoes, it's narrow spread or one at a time. So if you're confident that your aim is good, every single torpedo can hit the target and this thing has a lot of torpedoes if you don't already know how many torpedoes this thing fires i'm not going to spoil it we're going to wait for it to actually happen because it's pretty impressive anyway it, this is an all tier 10 domination battle on the shatter map there are no aircraft carriers so hooray and wargaming haven't even tried to sneak in any hybrid aircraft carriers, or at least I don't think so. There are certainly none on Frankie's team. I can't really tell at the moment, but it doesn't look like there are any on the enemy team either. You know, thanks to that bugged replay, we couldn't see the enemy team list at the beginning. Oh, there go the torpedoes, look at this. How many? <laughs> that's, that's 10 torpedoes from each side. <laughs> He's got, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh wait, he's not done. He's just waiting to get the, the good firing angle. And there's another 10 from the other side. <laughs> it's like having a gearing strapped to each side of your cruiser. Holy shit. Yeah. And they're reasonably fast too, with a speed of 65 knots and with a 13.5 kilometer range. These torpedoes are incredibly spicy. The guns on the ship aren't bad either. I mean, like I said, you can effectively think of this thing as a Minotaur or a Worcester. It is a light cruiser, so they're only 6 inch or 152 millimeter guns, but it's got a lot of them. 10 of them in total with rapid rotating turrets and a pretty spicy 5 second reload. Now, because the two destroyers on the team are not proven to be particularly brave, at least not at the start of the battle, Frankie's having to strap his man pants on and take this central cap at Bravo himself. This is an incredibly dangerous situation to be in, in a light cruiser, because you've got no armour, and there are a lot of battleships in play, and every single one of them can overmatch what armour he has. So he's going to play this one really cautious. I mean, there are a number of opportunities that he could be taking, like this, to shoot at the enemy Minotaur, but he'd rather flip this cap, because there could be somebody down there or over there, who would see him if he shoots. I mean, he's popped his radar, so he knows there are no enemy destroyers lurking around, but that doesn't mean there aren't any enemy cruisers or destroyers just outside of radar range who might see him if he were to fire those guns. So he's going to play it safe and smart. He's going to take this cap circle. There it is. And then he's going to re-examine his options. You can tell this is the EU server, by the way, because there are so many people playing cruisers on both teams. We really do like to live dangerously over here. <laughs> Compared to the North American server, it used to be the other way around. You could often tell that you were watching an NA server battle because everybody was in cruisers. There were relatively few destroyers or battleships. I guess that's why they call it the land of the brave. <laughs> it's completely different now, of course. I regularly watch North American server replays where there are only two cruisers on each team. Of course, because every new battleship that Wargaming have put into the game over the last year or so has got bigger and bigger guns that can just overmatch cruiser armour. So a lot of the North American cruiser players have wised up and now they're playing destroyers of battleships. We do still like living dangerously over here on the EU server though. 
Although I have to say, Frankie boy here, he's playing this smart. He's got the torpedoes away again. I mean, he's right in the middle of the map. If he gets spotted, he's going to get crossfired by every battleship there is. Now, he could shoot at the Yamato, because he has just fired his guns and sunk the friendly Napoli. The guns aren't pointing in this direction, and he's probably still got at least 15 seconds left on his reload, but you don't know what else is down there. I mean, he's got some idea. There's a Z-52, there's a Minotaur, but he doesn't know where they are, so he's playing it safe. I realise this may not be the most exciting thing to watch, yet. <laughs> but trust your Uncle Jingles. Frankie knows what he's doing. These torpedoes are looking rather good, though. That Yamato is about to enter a world of hurt. Oh, the team had just lost another two ships. And then gotten their first kill. How are those torpedoes doing? I think that's going to be at least four. Two midships and two on the bows. Yep. Yeah. Four torpedo hits, an incapacitation, and a double flood. Is the Yamato, he would be wise to use his damage control with a double flood. And he has. So anybody who can set a fire on that Yamato now, well, it's going to burn for the full duration. Again, Frank, he's got the opportunity to take some shots at the Minotaur. He resists the urge. He's unspotted. Oh, and then he gets radared. That's probably neither of the Minotaurs. At least one of them has a smoke screen. But they're both at like 10 kilometers ish away. I don't think they actually have the radar range. Oh, it's the Alexander Nevsky. Again, frankly, shows remarkable restraint here. Because, I mean, often it's, oh, well, I'm radared. I may as well start shooting. Well, sure, the person who radared you is going to be paying attention. But the Nevsky can't shoot at him from here, all of the... The, uh, the Yamato's got some shots out. He's like, I'm adding my revenge here. And he gets it. <laughs> that was... A, yeah. The Yamato's 18.1-inch guns don't give a shit about light cruiser armour. And neither do the Conqueror's high explosive shells. But here comes the Nevsky. Now, I've seen some dismally bad torpedo runs in my time, and I think this Nevsky might be about to commit the worst one that I've seen so far this year, because in order to get his torpedoes away and stand a chance of hitting anything, he has to run into Frankie's torpedoes and give broadside to Frankie's 10 6-inch guns firing armor-piercing. And look at his torpedoes. Enemy I mean, really? <laughs> That was terrible. Oh, 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 I think we're about to get a kill. I think we are. Yeah, he's got one of the Minotaurs. Not quite quickly enough to get a double strike. And there's the Z-52. Handy little radar there, shots out. Could this be a third kill? I think it probably should. Yes. Frankie was in a really, really bad spot there. And he's not quite out of it yet, but he showed restraint, he was patient, he didn't panic, he did what he needed to do when he needed to do it, and who's that shooting at him? That wasn't the Minotaur. Oh, that's, yeah, like I said, he's not quite out of the woods yet. Fortunately for Frankie, I don't know what that Thunderer was afraid of, he could easily have finished Frankie off here, but instead, I mean, he's, he doesn't want to get shot at by, admittedly, a fairly potent light cruiser, but just a light cruiser on a quarter of his health, and the Thunderer was on full health, and instead he ducked into cover rather than stopping to finish Frankie off. He is going to regret that decision. Torpedoes away again. I suspect, just in case the Thunderer thinks, actually, you know, I could finish that Brisbane off. Frankie's got the Hydro running. There was a Hindenburg down that gap, and the Hindenburg has torpedoes. Although I don't think he was close enough to be in torpedo range, but hey, better safe than sorry. When you've got this little health in a light cruiser, it doesn't pay to take any chances. And as we've already seen, Frankie's not the kind of guy who takes chances unnecessarily. So how are things going? They're actually one kill ahead on the enemy team with two cap circles, but there's not a huge difference in the points. I mean, this battle could absolutely still go either way. He's sending the depth charge attack planes out. Not that he's actually trying to sink an enemy submarine. The enemy submarine's already been sunk, but he's just looking to see who's going to shoot at them. At the moment, his hydro and his radar are on cooldown, and that's the next best reconnaissance option that he has. Now, I know I've made a big song and dance about how Frankie doesn't like to take unnecessary risks, and that's true, but that doesn't mean 
he doesn't take risks. Sometimes the risks are necessary. That's a lot of enemy ships coming around the corner and they're just gonna roll straight through that cap that he just sweated blood and tears to take. And there's nobody else really in a position to do anything about it. Well, not anything decisive, but he is. Whatever he does is probably gonna be very expensive for him though, because while the Hindenburg and the Salem aren't any immediate threat, that Conqueror is, and his guns are pointing this way. Frankly, I don't know if this was through luck or judgment though, but that Conqueror has definitely just fired. He's busy reloading the guns. Frankly, get your ass into cover. Some of those torpedoes are gonna hit, but it's not gonna be enough. The Conqueror's seen you, he's turning in. There's a couple of hits. There's a flood. You're safe. Safety, of course, is a relative term in this situation because the Conqueror's coming, as is the Thunderer. <laughs> and yeah, he's angling up, but I mean, it's a Conqueror. His 16 inch shells are going to overmatch your armor regardless of angle. So the best thing that Frankie can do right now is get the ship turned around and get the 10 torpedoes away from the other side. Or actually, does he need to use all 10? He doesn't. At this kind of range, the ripple fire option is probably best. That Conqueror's going to have reloaded now, though. Frankie gets the barrels cleared of the high explosives, switches to the armor piercing, aims for the 32mm bow section, lies back, thinks of Australia. The Conqueror's still relying on the high explosive shells. I mean, it nearly killed him because it's Conqueror high explosive, but he gets away with it. He still has torpedoes in reserve. Here comes the Thunderer. Surely there is no way. No way whatsoever he's going to survive this. The Thunderer's looking right at him. The torpedoes are good, but it's not enough to sink the Thunderer who shoots back with the armor pit. Wow! <laughs> Took enough of them on the belt to survive with the fraction of his health remaining. And now he's hammering the Thunderer's bows with the six inch armor piercing. There's the Kraken unleashed. <laughs> Cap successfully defended. Oh my god. How is he still alive? Conqueror, 16 inch guns. Thunderer, 18 inch guns. The Thunderer was at least firing armor piercing, unlike the Conqueror. I mean, Conquerors always over rely on their high explosive. But that Thunderer, I told you that Thunderer was going to regret it. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, Frankie, um, no heels left. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't really matter what Frankie does from this point on, he's already justified his position on the team. He's got the Kraken unleashed, five kills. How much damage is that? 210,000 damage. And this isn't even an arms race battle, it's just a regular domination match on the Shatter map. I mean, there's only two enemies left. Then again, oh, deep water torpedoes, that'll be the Yu Yang. You've got no radar. You've got one charge left on the Hydro after this one's out. The Yu Yang could kill you in a gunfight. The Minotaur over there could kill you in a gunfight. You could get some shots off here and then slip in the cover. Oh, is this going to be a kill? Is this going to be kill number six? Oh, come on. No, nope, not quite enough lead. Scored a hit, set a fire. It's continuing to burn. No, he's used the damage control. Ah. Oh. And now he's healing up. He needs to be really careful here. The Minotaur can easily kill him. And the torpedoes aren't going to catch him. Okay. The St. Vincent took him out. That just leaves the Yu Yang. We already saw the deep water torpedoes come from the other side of the island, so we've got a pretty good idea of where he is. The Yu Yang doesn't have a huge amount of options now. I mean, technically, there are still two radar cruisers on Frankie's team, but he doesn't have it. Oh, he's managed to torpedo and sink the St. Vincent. Good job. It's not going to be enough for the Yu Yang to win. I mean, he's basically, he's bought himself some time. Frankie's team were at 968 points, and then he killed the St. Vincent, and, well, now they're back up to 923 points, so it's just a matter of time. But the Yu Yang is still playing to win. He's flipping the cap at Bravo. Frankie, of course, doing exactly the same over here at Charlie. He's going to get himself a second cap. And there's no rush. He doesn't need to hand the Yu Yang more points by getting himself killed. A lesson that certain other members of his team would be well advised. There we go. He's managed to depth charge and sink the submarine as well. He's reset the points again. They're down, down to less than 900 points. Frankly, of course, he's not taken the bait. He's got no radar. He's got no hydro. Well, he's still got one charge of hydro, but it's on cooldown for over a minute. The Des Moines, however... I mean, Frankie's team do technically have two radar cruisers, but he's got no charges of radar left. 
The Des Moines still does. There it goes. He's using the L and he's spotted him. But guess what? What the Des Moines doesn't know is that the Yu Yang has already launched torpedoes. He knows now. Of course, knowing that they're coming and being able to do anything about it are two entirely different things. And there goes the Des Moines. He just took a hit from something though. I don't know if it was shots in the air from the Des Moines or possibly the Yoshino round in the corner of the island, but he's managed to go undetected on very, very low health and was forced to give up the cap at Bravo. If he has any sense, and if you look at the position of Francesco's team, the only real option that the Yu Yang has is to try to run for Alpha. But even that's only really going to be buying him time. With the current points and all three caps, the Yu Yang needs to get another kill in the next 30 seconds, which is not out of the question. I mean, I've seen bigger throws than this. <laughs> I make a living doing a video series featuring bigger throws than this. He's going to have to do something fast, though. And I don't think his torpedoes are going to be reloading fast enough. And he's doomed if he gets into a gunfight, even with the Shimakaze. No, they're, they're about to win. Oh, he's been spotted. He's trying to take out the Yoshino. I mean, fair play to this Yu Yang for making an absolute fight of it. But he was, he was doomed to failure. Honourable mention of the Yu Yang there. But, well, he just didn't have enough time. And he didn't have enough health. He was lucky to survive. Unfortunate for Francesco, denied his sixth kill, but I'm sure he's not complaining. <laughs> that, was, uh, that showdown against the Conqueror and the Thunderer, holy shit. I mean, he played the odds because, yeah, he is just a light cruiser, but his armour belt, if sufficiently angled, will still potentially deflect even 18-inch armour piercing. And it did. I mean, it didn't leave him with a lot of health. He was... He was definitely lucky, um, but he was playing the odds and it paid off. You only need one hit point anyway. <laughs> so, uh, Francesco, in the all-singing, all-dancing Royal Australian Navy Tier 10 light cruiser HMAS Brisbane. It is one hell of a ship. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.